Boxing King Media. I'm here with acclaimed trainer, Mr. Ronnie Shields. Ronnie, we just spoke off camera and you told me that you just got here to Vegas last night. Uh, how are you feeling about, about what's ahead this weekend? I'm feeling great, man. My guy's in great shape. He's ready to go. He's excited. And uh, he's confident. Well, with your guy, we're talking about uh, David Morrell Jr., yes. right? And uh, look, the, the last fight ended, uh, it was, let, let's just call it what it was. It was a very brutal and dominating performance. Yes. Has that affected him in any way, the fact that he put a man into the hospital and into a coma in his very last fight? No, not at all. You know, look, you know, this is boxing. We know things happen. And it's not David's fault that, you know, that his corner, or the referee, didn't stop the fight earlier. You know, you know, as long as this guy's trying to knock his head off, hey, you know, he's going to do the same thing. So, so, sorry, go ahead. No, and so he's going to do the same thing, you know. He, this, is, this is what we train for. And if they don't care about the fighter, you know, and, I mean, you know, I thought the guy took way too much punishment. I thought the fight should have been stopped after the eighth round, but they didn't. They let him go. And so my guy has to defend himself. So wh where do you place the blame there? I mean, you got three people there. You got a cornerman, obviously. You've got a referee, and you also have the doctor. Who is most responsible for that fight going way longer? I think we both agreed that it went way longer than it should have. Absolutely. Well, I think, I think it's... Uh, I think it's the corner. Because you got to understand, the corner knows this kid better than anybody. They know they fight him. And, you know, if you can't see that your guy had enough, then, you know, that's a problem. You know, that's a problem. You know, you got to know how much punishment your guy can take or cannot take, you know. And, you know, obviously they must have thought that they could, this guy had a chance. And the guy was losing round after round after round and just taking a beating. And, but then, if the corner don't stop it, that's when you got to look to the referee. If the referee don't stop it, that's when you got to look to the commission doctor. You know, they have to, you know, look after these fighters, man. These fighters, you know, they're not going to just give up. You know, you got to save them from themselves. Absolutely. I mean, the fighter's inclination is always to go far and to, and to finish the fight. Uh, let's talk about the future of David Morrell Jr. We had a, a cancellation or a replacement opponent. What can you tell us about that uh, going into this fight, uh, a guy who's coming in last moment? Does that change your planning at all? And, and how does that affect you as a trainer? Well, of course it changes everything, you know. Two different styles, you know. The, the guy who's fighting with a right-hander that likes to come forward and, and strong. You know, that's Cena Becco. But then now with uh, Yamaguchi, you know, he's a southpaw, and, you know, he comes, he goes back and forth. And so, but just a different, awkward style. So we, you know, of course we have to make adjustments. And I think we've made those adjustments, and like, we're ready to go. There's no excuses. Now, you've obviously prepared your fighter for the 12-round distance. He is the WBA regular champion at 168. Uh, stoppage, though, is in the cards in this fight? Well, I never put stoppages in my guy's head. You know, I, I never wanted him to look for that. You know, we put a game plan together. You know, we stick with that. If a stoppage happens, you know, we're going to be happy with that. If, it's, if it don't, then, you know, we go to 12-round distance. We're happy with that also. Talking about the kind of psychological preparation of, of the fight, which obviously is a huge part of coaching and what you do as a trainer. Yeah. I mean, you've got to fight a fighter in David Morrell Jr. who many people, including myself, have given him the tag of a generational talent. Uh, he's got under 10 fights. But yet people are talking about him taking on guys who have, you know, much more pro experience. How do you deal with that in the gym? I mean, you, you've got a guy who's, who's, again, under 10 fights, but th the world is talking about him like conquering fighters that are current and former world champions. I mean, what, what, what's that dynamic like? Well, you know, it's easy, man, because look, my kid, he's a natural born fighter. You know, he's a natural born fighter. This is what he does. You know, he's a, you know, he, he is a phenom. You know, that, that's who he is. 
and I, I just let him be who he is. And as far as opponents go, don't worry about the opponents. I, you know, I look at him, you know, I put a game plan together, I give it to him, we work on it every single day, and, you know, I, and I just let him be who he is. And, yeah, he has less fights than most of the top guys that are on the pound, but I think he's the best on the 68 pound out there. Does the talk get to his head at all? Do you have to deal with, with, with ego at all when it comes to David Morrell Jr.? Absolutely not. This kid, man, let me tell you something. This kid is the happiest kid I've ever seen in my life. You know, he's such uh, he he don't let anything bother him. He just do what he has to do. You know, when it's time to train, he trains. When it's time to fight, he fights. And, you know, he's, this guy, he works hard and he studies the game plan all the time. And he's just a fun guy to be around. Given your experience in the game, and given that you were one of the rumored trainers that were, you know, rumored to be in talks with, with AJ, Anthony Joshua, can you tell me a little bit about your thoughts of his last performance um, against Jermaine Franklin, if you saw it, and his chances against the top fighters in, in the division, whether it's Wilder, whether it's Fury, whether it's Usyk? Well, you know, yeah, AJ did contact me. He came to Houston, matter of fact. He stayed a few days in Houston, and then I went to, I went to London, and I stayed there for a week. We had conversations every day, trained every day with some of his other guys. You know, I didn't do much with him because of an injury that he had, but, you know, I was there for a week with him. You know, we had long talks, but the problem was he wanted me to come to England. And I, and I couldn't do it. You know, I had too many other fighters that I have to work with to pick up and just go and train him for like two to three months. You know, there's no way in the world I could have did that. So, but, you know, look, in this fight against Jermaine Franklin, I thought actually, I thought he did better in that fight than he did, obviously, in the two previous fights when he fought Usy. But, you know, when, when you when you with a new trainer, there's certain things that the new trainer wants you to do that you have to focus on. And I think people are forgetting the focus of that. They just looking at oh he's supposed to go in and knock this guy out. No, it don't work that way. He's trying to learn a new system, and I I thought he did it well. There you go. And and given what you saw uh, with your expert eyes. Is he ready for the likes of a Wilder or an Usyk or a Joshua? Well, not Usyk because he's he's lost twice. But let's say a, a Wilder or or uh, or Fury. Absolutely, Sorry. he's ready. He's ready for all of those guys. The thing about it is, you know, he's a top level heavyweight. So, you know, he's he's there for a reason. You know, he's an ex champion for a reason. And and you know, of course, he's ready for he's ready for anybody that's out there. Definitely. Uh, before we end up here, because uh, I know you got a busy day here, give me your thoughts, please, on Tank Davis taking on Ryan Garcia. Uh, you know, how, how do you see it? I see it as a hell of a fight. You know, I think I think the hype is 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 correct. You know, the, the build up to this thing is really good because both fighters are great fighters, and the thing about it is neither one of them is, you know, really D world champion, but. To have it this way, just let you know that these guys, they come to fight. You know, both guys. And it's going to be a hell of a fight. And for me, I have no, I have, uh, I don't care who wins, you know, for me. Because I'm a fan of both guys. Yeah. So, and I think the fans are going to be the winners in this fight. One last follow-up. You said something there that was very interesting. You said neither of them is the world champion. The world champion is obviously... Devin the Dream Haney. Yes. Uh, who's taking on Vasil Lomachenko here? Actually, where we are right now at the yes. MGM Grand, March 20th. What does it say to you about the state of the game of boxing that this fight being contested at a catchweight with the rehydration clause between two guys that aren't world champions is getting so much more uh, attention and coverage and interest than a fight for the undisputed lightweight championship of the world? Look, I think what it says is, is that it's, there's so many good fighters in the world right now. And they're all young, and they all can fight. So, 
and people want to see the best fights. And sometimes you don't, you don't always have to be a champion to put on the best fight. Sure. You know, you're a contender who's, who's ready to be the champion. But, you know, so you go going with one of the best other contenders out there that, that can generate the, the amount of, uh, how I say it, the, the amount of uh, activity that all of the fans and the media and everybody wants to see. So you don't always have to be a champion to, to be in one of the biggest fights in boxing. Thank you on behalf of a boxing scene media and myself, uh, sorry, uh, Boxing King Media and myself, uh, Maestro Ronnie. This was a pleasure to interview to you and uh, good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. Appreciate that.